Uh, right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back uh, to this episode of the Procurement and Finance Coffee Break. I think we're into our 50s now. Um, and, you know, what... Well, I know, I know. Yet. We've actually managed to speak over 50 times. Unbelievable. Um, and what better way to celebrate than to talk about the exciting topic of gap conversion. And to, to, to give you an idea of exactly where my knowledge stands on this, Claire had to tell me it's two A's, not one A in gap. <laughs> and therefore, you've now reached the limit of what Richard's going to be able to contribute. So I'm just going to be a good boy and do as I'm told and ask the questions. But more importantly, that's a great job because... Claire, it's going to allow you to uh, talk about it. And look, I, I it, and to do the preamble, I do at least understand that, um, you know, this is a topic that matters for any company that's going to go public. And, and you know, much as we, you know, well, so not much as, when we talked about capital market readiness, you know, one of the things that you highlighted was that whole need to align, simplify, come onto a common system and process in all areas, but finance being a big one. Uh, and clearly, depending on where you're going to go public, is going to play a big role in which gap, uh, you know, you convert to so that you're ready for that market. So uh, I know you made a very big point last time about talking about the particular challenge of German gap being very different from everything else. Yeah. So let's um, let's start. All right. Look, I, let's imagine I, I'm a company. I, I'm currently operating on German Gap for whatever reason, and mm -hmm. I need to convert to IFRS because that's the standard that the market expects in which I wish to go public. Mm -hmm. So come then. Tell me why this is a challenge and not just a different way of ordering a report yeah so so um i think it's important to say that many stock exchanges require or prefer ifs reporting for listed companies um, right certainly if you you know list in the us then obviously you could go with um, us gap but more international markets prefer ifs um, obviously, it's improved comparability because, you know, if right. you're reporting under German Gap and your competitors are reporting under IFRS, you know, it's going to be apples and pears. So it's going to be hard right. to compare your performance to that of your competitors. Okay. Uh, also, IFRS is widely recognised and understood. Um, so it doesn't matter really if it was German Gap or French Gap or uh, I don't know Italian civil code, you know, uh, which which is which is certainly something that I wouldn't advise listing under. Can I especially. can I just ask a really stupid question? <laughs> yeah. What does GAP stand for? Generally accepted accounting practices. Generally accepted accounting practices. Mm. I'm educated, right? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. So so it's all about you know comparing your your performance against that of yeah. your competitors and people being familiar with that style of reporting basically. Right. Um, and um, you know obviously the main challenges if you don't is for example areas like revenue recognition provision okay. leases being accounted for completely different and therefore the investor will struggle to understand what the performance of the business is. Right. Okay. So. so that's, that's why um, um uh, and then if you were thinking about so sort of then from then on what are the key steps in planning and executing a successful gap conversion because that's why i really wanted to talk about this is because i've seen quite all right so so just before you cover all the main steps i mean i yeah. i mean look, I, I i i would consider myself an an educated listener who knows nothing about this but i i've just got a general sense that you know for me, there are only so many ways that you can report the financial performance of a company. But actually, what you're telling me is that the 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 accepted practice is significantly different under different gap reporting regimes. <clears throat> and, and therefore, it actually does make a really big difference, I presume, in terms of staff knowledge, uh, data, the way systems, the report. Right, you're nodding. Yeah. Okay, so this is a big deal. All right, thank yeah. you. So, so look, okay, if I let's say I am on German Gap, 
Mm. And I do want to go to IFRS. Mm -hmm. How would I how would I go about planning and executing that? I suppose that conversion project from wh wh whatever practice I'm on now to whatever practice I wish to switch switch to. Yeah. So planning is actually really crucial for a successful conversion. Right. And one of the major mistakes that companies often make is they just think, well, we'll we'll give our historic data to, I don't know, KPMG or Deloitte or PwC or wherever, yeah. and just convert it to us. What the issue is, though, is um, when you're reporting under whatever gap you're under, the disclosure notes and the footnotes to the accounts will have certain data in it. Right. Um, uh, and then when you move to another, it'll have it'll require different a different data set. And often that data set is not captured in the underlying systems that you currently have. Right. So what that means is you can't just and again, we're talking about often companies that are going through this, they often have multiple systems. You know, they haven't often um, like put one system in. Um, so that means that in the legacy system, you'll have captured some of the information that you need for yeah, your yeah. future gap IFRS, but it will mean that you'll often need to enrich that data from other sources. Yeah, um, yeah. that is a very manual <laughs> process. It's not just about you know giving every accountant in the group a template and saying fill it in because. They're not going to be able to necessarily do that just like that. They're not just going to be able to, you know, um, pull a report in their system and pivot it and give it to KPMG to do the gap right. conversion. It. Because often maybe maybe up to 50 percent of that data just won't be in the system. Right? Okay. Yeah. Let's take, for example, leases. Leases, you know, often a company won't have a repository where it knows what all its leases are. And so therefore for lease accounting under IFRS, they're like, well, actually, we don't currently have that information to hand to be able to right. work the, the, um, the provisions that are needed under IFRS. So okay. that, is, that is really what the, the, the challenge is around gap conversion. And I say planning is crucial because often people just do like a high, high level yeah, yeah. where they think, oh, yes, we'll we'll get the data and we'll hand it off to a a big four and they'll just convert it to us but often yeah. then what what doesn't happen that big four is just engaged to um literally sort of crank the handle on a on a gap conversion calculator assuming they have the data right they're right. not even engaged to find that data put together an information maintain plan manage the client in any way they're just on a like a, a time and materials basis right. Give me the data. Once I have the data, I'll put it into our lovely gap calculator and it will spit out what your um, right. tips should be previously. Um, the problem with that then is this is often you get um, rising costs from that um, external big four. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're stopping and starting whilst you as a company are giving them data in piecemeal little bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and often you'll see you know, costs going up tenfold. I, mean, I kid you not, I've seen it go up more than tenfold. On, really? On wow. External advisors doing gap conversion. And that's because you haven't got a dedicated project team who's gone through, like said, right, OK, what are all the companies that we def that are material and we definitely need to convert? Um, where are all the differences in disclosure notes? How are we going to get that data that missing in our system? Right. Who's going to do that? Are we going to have like a team of five, um, you know, data people who are going to sort of um, comb through invoices and historic information to compile yeah, that yeah. Data for us? Yeah. Who's going to actually do it? And often in that process, um, you'll have like a key man or woman to be politically correct <laughs> dependency because you'll have one person who understands the data and right. that won't put in a sort of structured structured sort of data factory yeah that's where um i guess gap conversion projects i've seen them like the the budgets for them in many many companies previously just rocket because um, because as I say, that sort of understanding of that actually in order to do them, data is key. 
and until you understand what data you have, what data you need, and who's going to enrich that data to be able to give it to some advisor to, as I say, crank the handle and work out what your comparatives are, um, yeah, yeah. that is the real problem. And then, um, of course, you know, there's other things to plan in that process as well, like, you know, once you are in a good position that you have managed to get all that data to um, uh, to be um, calculated and re-reported under IFRS, um, then you really want to go through some sort of parallel reporting transition period because you'll have an internal management team and internal accountants who right. used to do that, for example, and you need a, a, a sort of a transition period of where your budgeting and your reporting, at least at a high level, under both gaps. So they yeah. can say, okay, well, this is what my PL and my cost centers used to look like. This is what they now look like. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? And, and then also training as well. And right. Like okay. Training. Um, so most companies, and again, this goes back to the professionalization piece on the role to capital market readiness, will yeah. have. Um, uh, a, an accounting uh, manual and that accounting manual is again it's often drafted by a big four in line with the new the new gap yeah It'll explain to them you know where what types of costs should go to what type, reporting lines in the accounts how they should treat certain things so it's all about um i guess having it's, it's like any transformation project you need a clear plan and you need to clear yeah, yeah. What your clear deliverables are and i think um too many companies just think literally i'll just engage a big four to do um to do the conversion and they don't realize how much responsibility they have themselves for ascertaining right. to um, right. do a parallel run training their staff and that's a massive project i can just tell that that big book of how to do it is my ideal bedtime reading sleep yeah, guaranteed yeah. in seconds yeah all right yeah. I, I look, i'm terrified of asking this question but look very briefly because i would have no clue i mean can you just give it like three or four examples of what are the big differences between, you know, for example, German Gap and IFRS? Because, again, I'm, I'm struggling to appreciate mm. why this is such, well, not why it's such a big issue, but, you know, what, what are we talking about in differences in reporting that makes this such a complex thing to do? Yeah, so revenue recognition, for example, IFRS right. 15 is more principle-based and may affect the timing of revenue recognition. Um, okay. lease, IFRS 16 requires most leases to be on balance sheet these days. Uh, right. I don't know if you remember the good old days of operating leases and finance leases. I do. You do, you do, yeah. And that would be where often procurement would then come and talk to finance and go, uh, can we treat this as an operating lease and therefore off balance sheet? We'd never do that. Yes. Do you remember those good old days? Anyway, everything's yeah. on balance sheet these days. Yeah, well. Um, provisions, intangible assets, financial instruments, deferred tax, pension accounting. Right. So there's lots list. of areas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So okay, right. So look, as ever, advice. You know, if you know, in in very simple terms, if I'm a company in, embarking on a gap conversion project, and we've heard about the differences, the importance, the reality, and and the planning. You know, what what key tips would you offer that company to make sure they have the best chance of success? Yeah. Um, start really early. Um, right. Give yourself plenty of time because often, um, you know, when you think you want to do a gap conversion project, you probably have no idea what the quality of the yeah. data is that you will need for IFRS reporting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, until you've done like um, what I would say is a really good w way to work out how much time you need is to look through the group structure perhaps with that external advisor and take one company that's got you know everything going on and will be yeah. quite difficult to convert so it has pensions deferred taxes it's got leases it's got goodwill it's got everything going on right. and we'll take that as like a hard company to convert yeah yeah and then literally <laughs> do a walk through and say, okay, well, if we look at historic data, 
and what is needed under for IFRS, what data have you got, and how long would it actually take us to get that data and then convert that data just for one quarter? And then if you do that for like let's say a, a medium company that's got you know maybe 50% of the issues on the balance sheet that yeah, you're yeah. going to under, and then from an easy company that's just got like I don't know revenue recognition and some pensions and that's it. Um, and then you can almost make what I call a effort o meter. <laughs> but basically, you're basically an effort o meter. An effort o meter, yeah. You're basically looking at one quarter's effort for these companies. And you go for each company in the group. Is it? Do we think it's an easy, medium, or hard company to convert? Uh, okay. And you're extrapolating what you did on your one proof of concept. You know, for your one. Right. You know, well, if it took us that long for one quarter for these three companies and I extrapolate it over the group, then that is the likely ma That's number of That's a clever idea. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's a yeah. very clever idea. Uh, yeah. It's actually a very similar um, a concept to when in procurement we're doing estimate of the, you know, the cost drivers, the cost yeah. breakdown of a product or service. We'll do delta analysis, which is you start with something that you know, you work out what's different to allow you to have an estimate of what something else that's similar. So, for example, you know, if you've got a nut and a bolt and you know the cost of making it and the metal and you have mm -hmm. a bigger nut and bolt, well, the process is the same, but there's more metal. So there'll be a yeah. delta in the in the material cost. So yeah. I guess that's the same approach. Start with something yeah. that you've learned by doing a pilot. And yeah. then, as you say, extrapolate it to understand what the full scope of what you're doing might be. Yeah, and, okay. and many companies don't do that. They just they make some high level assumptions that are completely right. incorrect. I'm afraid. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Got it. <laughs> so, so that's that's one thing. Um, I would say don't underestimate training needs. Um, and 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 try to document everything as much as possible. Um, because often when you're enriching data, you're yeah. going to take data from other sources. Don't forget once you've done this conversion project, you know. Um, KPMG, PwC, or Deloitte, whoever has helped you convert the data, that yeah. will be one party. Let's okay. say KPMG did it, but and then let's say your auditors are PwC. Right. Uh, so PwC, as your auditors, they didn't do that conversion for you, so they will want to audit it. So they will want to understand how you enriched the data, how you handed it off to KPMG, how KPMG converted the data and how it all fed into your comparatives that you were reporting this year. Right. So, so yeah, so, wow. you know, okay. having that clear audit trail of what you've done and Got document it. how you've done it is really important. Got it. Well, OK, um, thank you. And as ever, I came into this completely cold. Um, <laughs> yes. I believe I thought I was going to struggle. Actually, do you know what? I didn't because you know, like we've talked about so many times, it almost doesn't matter what the topic is. It's do you understand why it's important? I didn't. I've now got some insight to that. And if you're going to go about doing a change, it's those same old things. Think about what you're doing. Engage the right knowledge. Have a really clear plan and test and adjust as you go through it to make sure that, you know, it, that the plan is still valid and write it down so that anybody else coming in can understand you know where you've come from and where you're going to so look great insights and you know a topic that isn't close to my heart at all <laughs> but an enjoyable conversation as always so claire thank you for sharing your knowledge and look if you're watching and you want further advice reach out to claire uh yeah. you'll find her on linkedin through the uh you know through through this um through this coffee break if you've got a topic that you want us to talk about, let us know um, and share your comments um, on what we've talked about. We'd love to hear what you think. Um, from my perspective, the good news is that our next two coffee breaks are going to be on subjects close to my heart. Yeah. And Claire is going to show her interest in what I care about. But actually, <laughs> we all care about the same thing because actually, as Claire's just talked about, you know, part of capital market readiness from a previous coffee break esg reporting is going to be a really big part of that now so you know i'm not so far away from what claire cares about either but look until next time from both of us bye-bye
Bye.